this webinar is recorded and the recording will be used for dissemination material. So with no further ado, I would like to um, uh, on behalf of the Commissioner Maria Gabriel, uh, thank you for all your presence here. And this webinar is organized by the Commissioner and she's here with us. So thank you so much for taking your time uh, to join us today. So Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture and Education and Youth, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you to Judith and Antoinetta. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. You are role models for us and I'm sure that to the, today's discussion will inspire many, many, many uh, uh, other people. When I see in our chat, it's amazing to see what's, what's happened. I would like to say a big thank you to my team for organizing this, this meeting. Again, as I already said, it, it's such a pleasure to be here with you all. I, I organize this webinar as I do believe that chess can play a key role in the development of critical and strategic thinking of young people. Because chess is such a fascinating sport. You assess the board, draw logical conclusions, plan ahead, anticipate the future, and most importantly, you make your move. I cannot think of a better checklist for success in life especially given the challenges we as a society are facing, given the challenges that our young people will have to deal with, digitalization, climate change, COVID-19, I think we can agree the state of the board in front of us is quite tough. So strategic thinking is paramount for success and chess is a great way to get young people to think strategically, to be creative, given the constraints to which we are subjected, because reality could be not always be easy, but we still make our move. And indeed, bringing chess to classrooms in itself was an important move made by people like Judith Polgar. I doubt she was thinking specifically about the pandemic when she decided to dedicate herself to this cause, but the strategic value of that decision remains all the same. As schools had to close, we saw even better how valuable game-based pedagogies really were. If school can only be accessed through a screen and you cannot play outside, games can really help you focus. Judith or people like Antoinetta Stefana, Stefanova, you are an inspiration for us, for our young people, and I would like to express again all my gratitude. Well, in life, we cannot always predict every move thrown at us, but we can try to set up, to set up the board in a way where the possible moves are stuck in our favor. And this is precisely what we try to do at policy level. We cannot predict every classroom scenario. Learning is hard to predict. Each student has their own questions. Each teacher explains the matter their own way. But we can still set them up for success at policy level. We can create opportunities for learning in environments that bring people together. We can promote exploration and risk assessment using creativity and independent thinking. And this is at the core of the European education area. The analogy of setting up the play, moving pieces to our advantage in chess, works so well because we aim precisely to put students and teachers in a position where they can generate the most value, the most learning, the most success. And we are working on making sure everyone develops key competencies. That's set in our recommendation on this issue. This means basic skills, but also social and emotional skills, responsibility, cooperation, problem solving or critical thinking. And we'll also make sure that young learners stay in school through our Pathways to School Success initiative. After all, fighting early school living is a bit like making sure we keep our pieces on the board, not taken by the opponent. And we create spaces where you can come together learn together and play together too. 
like e twinning. I saw again in our chat that we have a lot of e uh, representative of the e twinning community, and I must say that yes, for me too, e twinning is an amazing tool. It marshals digital tools to foster the most important aspect of school life, learning together. And I'm really very glad that more than 74 projects have dealt with chess. And this webinar further underscores our commitment to using chess as a powerful learning instrument. In fact, the e-training community has been central in connecting learning, critical thinking and making our move contributing to our communities. And the connections here with the new European Bauhaus this year really showcase this commitment to marrying critical thinking and action. With your contribution, we are about to make our future more beautiful and sustainable together. And indeed, I cannot think of something more emblematic of setting up a winning board than teachers and students reflecting on how to improve their school, making it greener, more digital and learning the lessons from COVID-19. So, dear friends, let me welcome you to this webinar. I hope my admiration for your work has come true because you are definitely an aspiration and chess bringing you all together certainly is an important component of this admiration. Who doesn't love an intellectually challenging activity where you learn together, make friends and are a part of a community that sets you up for success? Indeed, I could just as easily be talking about chess as about school. So thank you all for your commitment, for making so many right moves, bringing chess to school. And I hope in addition to everything else, that today's webinar is also a token of recognition of your work. So I wish you all the success, but now a wonderful webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you once more, Commissioner Maria Gabriel. And uh, now is the time to actually give the floor to our guests, our honorable guests, uh, already mentioned by Commissioner Maria Gabriel, Judith Polgar and Antoine Antoinette Stefanova. And we will start with Judith Polgar. And actually, I will stop presenting my slides so she can start sharing her screen with us. And meanwhile, I'll just introduce Judith Polgar. Judith Polgar, uh, as probably most of you know, <laughs> she's an Hungarian chess grandmaster, an Olympic champion, and one of the most successful female chess players ever. Judith, thank you so much for accepting the invitation to be with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the kind words uh, from uh, the commissioner. And I would like to welcome everybody who is right here with us at the webinar of Chess in Education. I think it is uh, something wonderful and I'm very much appreciated to be here with you, that all of you either already involved with Chess in Education or maybe thinking about or on the edge. So I'm Judith Polgar. I was competing for more than three decades myself. I was mainly playing against male competitors. I wanted to be the best, but I reached the top 10. And I was for a few decades, uh, 26 years, number one between the ladies. I retired in 2014 from competitive chess. And since then, I'm focusing promoting chess. And with my foundation, we focus a lot specifically on education, how to implement chess in it. So in the next 10 minutes, you're going to be hearing some of my thoughts and uh, I try to put together in this very short presentation why chess is beneficial for kids and it may become indispensable in the future education, I believe. So let's start. Uh, chess for every kid. I do believe that there are many forms of having uh, chess in the classroom, but there are different ways. So first of all, I want to talk just a little bit about learning chess itself. It's, it's a game. You can teach a kid at home, grandparents, chess teachers, or in the classroom. But then we are talking about using chess as a game. And this is something develops a lot. I'm going to be talking about it a little bit. But there is another way of using it 
integrated into school subjects, which is completely different uh, way of thinking. And I think most of you are teachers right here. And I can tell you that there are tons of different ways how you can use it in your own subject, implementing chess, using chess for motivation. So let's go first chess is a game. I started to play chess when I was five and let's uh, talk a little bit about what it uh, develops with kids and what can it give to kids. Pattern recognition is one of the most commonly said thing about chess and it is true because that's what I did also that patterns are extremely important in a child's life. Logical thinking it is also something pushing and uh, very important for kids. Problem solving is something that you do non-stop in a chess game. And I do believe that all of us know how important it is, especially in these difficult days, to solve problems. And uh, decision making is also something that you continuously do in a chess game. Critical thinking is also something very important, not only in the chessboard to be able to improve yourself, but it's also something extremely important in modern age to be a critical thinker. This is something underestimated, I think, nowadays. Analytical skills is also something you can learn quite a bit through by playing chess, because you always have to analyze your mistakes or your moves, how to improve yourself in the next opportunity. Strategy is absolutely essential in life, whether you have a short-term strategy or a long-term, but for example, for sustainability in the world, it is definitely move number one, I believe, that you do have to make a good strategy. So you have to be moving on in your head, really making your steps ahead. Combinational skill I find also very important. In my chess, it was uh, very known that I was making all kinds of combinations combining different ideas, different movements, whether it's a chessboard or your everyday activity, you do have to manage many things at the same time. So how to combine things the way that it actually works. Fair play, I also find something extremely essential for kids because in a chess game, especially if you're competing, then it means that you have to learn what fair play is. You have to acknowledge if you win, you lose, or your opponent is just better, and move on to the next game. But there are tons of different ways how you can learn and practice in a chess tournament for a kid. Calculation is also essential in every part of our life. This is obviously, I practiced a lot in chess, and discovery, I think something in chess you can do to discover a new idea, discover something that you didn't know yet. And it is also very important for the happiness of children. Self-control, it is, I must say, I have two children myself, but they've grown up already more or less. They are 15 and 17, but still I believe that self-control is something all the kids have to learn. Visual thinking, of course, I can play blindfolded, for example, but many of the kids can learn many different things through chess with visual thinking. And uh, I always like to highlight also how extremely well the game of chess supports gross mindset. Actually, we also have some activities in Hungary at the Global Chess Festival where we showed that chess is really an exceptionally good game to show for kids uh, how the gross mindset works. And now I want to share with you just a little uh, a thought idea how a father shared on a Facebook account. The question was by his friend, why do you invest so much money and time so that your son can learn chess and play chess? And his reply was this, I pay so my son can learn discipline, cultivate his mind, develop his creativity to achieve his goals, work hard, success doesn't happen overnight, responsibility, patience, ability to concentrate, skills that will be useful in his life, and it's a university of life. And later on, you can look back if you're interested to read the whole uh, part. But I believe there are really a lot of parents who already know how useful it is for their kids. 
But now let's go to the other side when chess is going into the classroom. It does have a place there. Trust me, we have our own program of my methodology and uh, we have for elementary school students, the chess palace. And I just want to highlight some of the few things which we do uh, uh, experience while uh, teaching and using it. So what is very important also that if you go into your classroom, the social emotional uh, skills can be also extremely well developed through chess. Kids also take responsibility much better. So you have to see that chess can be used in very different ways in different subjects, and it can be a great connection to develop their personality as well. So responsibility, collaboration. There are a lot of ways you can connect chess to collaborate in the classroom. Cognitive development is extremely important. Verbal skills, we also experience that the kids are getting better. Arithmetic, obviously, with the coordinates on the chessboard, but also we use a lot the pieces value for mathematical equations. Analytical skills, I mentioned also with the chess, the game of chess, and I have to tell you that there are quite a bit of things which is, which is developed through in the classroom using chess as a tool by the teacher or if somebody teaching chess. Self-confidence is also something I can even say maybe the most important that kids do have self-confidence. This is extremely important to be able to learn, to assess yourself, to evaluate yourself, to make uh, everything what you do. Creativity is something that we all do, but we have to practice it as well. Imagination is very important. Memory, we do a lot of different games in memory because what we use with chess pieces, for example, kids can be very happy, they, uh, they give a positive feedback, they experience positiveness, and they can learn better other things as well. Faster learning, it is something also I've uh, experienced it with many people who are using chess in the classroom, that many of them using chess and the kids start to learn faster, for example, mathematical subject uh, things. Motivation, it is something essential for kids. That's the only way that kids can really learn and study new things if you keep motivate them. And of course, it's a great challenge for teachers out there. Gamification is something that I do feel very important. The game of chess is already a great game, but I think with chess, with the 64 uh, squares, with the six different kind of characters and many different ideas can be developed, making gamification elements to use for educating kids and teaching them everyday uh, skill uh, things. And uh, experience-based learning, this is also something very important. I grew up, I was homeschooled myself, and most of my life I learned things not in theory, but immediately by experience and doing things. And this is something I think it's essential in nowadays uh, education that kids should be experiencing continuously things. So by doing, they are learning very fast. Just final uh, uh, slide that I want to share with you that we also make some research control groups in our uh, educational program in the Chess Palace. And uh, Eva Jarmati, a senior researcher, was uh, helping us to, to do so. So we had some of the Chess Palace and some of the classes who did not use the Chess Palace. And the findings were that the strongest effect is in the field of intellectual abilities. Reasoning is also something very important, and through chess you can improve a lot for kids. Having that, better performance in verbal skills, in arithmetic, children with special educational needs, it's also very important, and I want to highlight that, that it can be very, very well used for those kids. So thank you very much. I would like to wish you that uh, you get inspired to use chess in your subject or in some way or another. And anyway, I would like to thank you for all the teachers who are here and all the teachers generally who dedicate their life to this profession because you are one of the most important in the world because the next generation is raised by you. Thank you very much.
Well, thank you, Judith, for the inspiring speech. And uh, there's uh, Judith also founded the Judith Polgar Foundation. So there's a lot of materials there, a lot of resources there, and we will happily share those resources as well with all of you, we, along with the recording of this session. Well, uh, there's already some questions on the chat, but we will take all of the questions while we go into the interactive discussion. Now, actually, we do have our uh, our second guest, Antoinette Stefanova, and I'll just kindly ask you for a few seconds so I can actually upload the slides again. Yes, they're coming in. Okay, wonderful. And Antoinette, Thank you also for accepting this invitation. Antoinette Stefanova is a Bulgarian chess grandmaster and women's ch uh, women's ch world champion. Sorry, from 2004 to 2006. And Antoinette, thank you so much again for joining us. And the floor is yours. You can take control of the slides. Thank you so much. And uh, OK, I take control. Yes, perfect. So uh first of all thank you everybody and uh dear european commissioner maria gabriel director general temis christofido dear judith dear teachers i'm really honored to be here taking part in this uh, webinar and to share my experience in chess and maybe it can help you make up your mind if you want to really use it as an educational tool and I would say a life tool really because it develops all the qualities we need in uh, in our life. So my story in and chess journey started in the in a rather standard way. Uh, at that time there was no chess in school <laughs> so my father had to introduced chess to me and my older sister and he did that when I was about four years old and my sister was about seven and how. Uh, how he did it was not so standard at that time uh, because uh, he started uh, telling us fairy tales. Fairy tales uh, using the chess pieces. So we had the two kingdoms and a princess and a prince and we had some ballroom dancing with the pieces and there was some marriages at the end, happy end of course. And uh, there was a lot of fairy tales about all the chess pieces. So the knights, bishops, rooks, all they, they had their fair share of adventures. But my favorite story was the story of the pawn. Starting out as the most unnoticeable soldier, if it managed to get through all the obstacles on the road and reach the final rank, the magic happens. The pawn can turn into a knight, a bishop, a rook, or even a queen. That really uh, captured my imagination as a four-year-old. And uh, later in life, I became, uh, I realized how important is that story for each one of us. That inspired me to be more interested in chess and after a few months of playing different games with the chess board and chess pieces, my father introduced the real chess rules. They are very simple and very strict and in the same time gives unlimited possibilities and that's, that really kept my attention and um, I was eager to learn more and more as the chess pieces were already my friends, I just wanted to know all new ways and uh, to just play with them. So quickly uh, we started uh, training for a few hours per day. And by the age of five or six, um, I started participating in my first official tournaments. At that time, uh, also, my family started falling apart. My parents were divorcing, so um, from calm, intelligent and loving people, they turned into some 
kind of uh, tireless enemies who were fighting all the time and for everything. Of course, uh, in such circumstances, normally the impact uh, goes to the children. So for my sister, she became a fierce rebellion and I was becoming just a very shy and withdrawn and quiet kid. I loved reading books. I started reading very young. By the age of five already, I was buying my own books in the library. Probably not the most suitable for my age, <laughs> but uh, this was one of my passions. And the other was chess. In chess, I felt safe and I could use my creativity. Also, the clear chess rules that doesn't allow any cheating and a very little, if any, luck factor gave me the security that if you do uh, your strategies uh, well, if you play better than your opponent, then you most probably win the game. So I was training for a few hours per day with my father and I quickly excelled at chess. From the first tournaments, I showed good results against men and women. And by the age of seven, I became the champion of Sofia amongst women. At 10, I became uh, the world champion for girls under 10 with 11 wins out of 11 games. But at the same time, I was going to the local school. So always I, I was combining chess and the traditional way of education. And of course, by traveling to tournaments, I was missing a lot of uh, a lot of classes. But I had excellent marks. How was that possible? I was not a genius, <laughs> not at all. But I believe that chess has helped has helped me a lot because I have uh, developed the ability to quickly absorb, memorize, analyze and apply the new information, which is very critical in uh, performing well in the education. As Judith have said, there are so many things to be learned by chess for school, for for the education in general, but also in life. I can say that chess has uh, helped me enormously in my life to grow up from this very shy child into somebody who have reached some of, <laughs> of his goals. And um, well, the strategic thinking uh, is a part of every chess player's life and it has uh, immense uh, influence over our way of thinking. Planning, choosing the right moments, always evaluating the circumstances and trying to make the right move. But also it has, chess teaches us to accept defeat because all of us, we go through that and not only in chess and in life and how you react after being defeated is really the most important thing for me and to be able to raise again, to rise again and to achieve what you want to achieve. So I have overcome a difficult childhood, somewhat troubled uh, teenage years. As most of the people, I was wondering if I should go continue with chess or go more seriously in education. I have decided to combine both. I was also lucky that I managed to do it uh, with a reasonable success. I have managed to become a European champion three times, also for, for girls, but also for ladies, and uh, three times world champion. Uh, as I mentioned, under 10 and also in the ladies and uh, in uh, rapid chess. It, as well as in the classical, but in the same time I have managed to go through my university. I have uh, a diploma in management of human resources, a master degree 
in finance and uh, the love of knowledge and uh, the hunger for knowledge have uh, driven me to continue learning throughout my life. So I'm doing now my second master degree in strategic leadership. I have gone to politics uh, where is uh, even more complex. <laughs> All the strategical and critical things in thinking are really of great importance. I have been a member of the Bulgarian parliament in two parliaments. So I believe that uh, most of what I have achieved is uh, thanks to chess and uh, thanks to the qualities uh, and discipline that chess gives to us. And I really hope that um, teachers would uh, embrace this in initiative to teach chess in the preschool and school age, because chess really teaches us not what to think, but how to think. And I believe that this is the most important thing today. Thank, thank you very much, and I wish you all a pleasant uh, discussion after that. Thank you, Antoinette. Very, very emotional and inspiring speech as well. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I hope that these two first keynote speeches were enough to spark some curiosity and some questions in your minds, because actually now we are going into uh, our interactive discussion. And for our interactive discussion, we will still count on our honorable guests and we will add to the conversation three twinning teachers that we have invited. These teachers are Anna from Poland, from the twinning project Chess, the Game of the Kings, that includes countries, uh, the countries France, Greece, Italy, Poland, Romania, Spain and Turkey. And the main goal of this project is to bring together the pupils from different countries to promote the key competencies through the game of chess. And we've talked about some key competencies already. And the other two colleagues is um, David, so joining Anna, we have uh, David uh, Gandara and Dimitris from, uh, sorry, Dimitris from Greece and David from Spain from the twinning project Learning Chess Together. That includes Croatia, Czech, Czech Republic, France, Greece, Italy, Poland and Spain. And the project goal is the creation of a chess guide for beginners and uh, students have to create text, audio, video and pictures about how the different pieces move and some basic rules and the creation of these resources will connect the project uh, in a diverse uh, with diverse school subjects. And actually, I already saw a question about the usage of chess to teach uh, languages. So I will actually now stop presenting my slides so we can all see our guests that are here today and now highlighted, which is wonderful. And uh, actually, I would like to first start with David. Thank you, David, for accepting the invitation and also Anna and Dimitris. And David, based on your experience developing this e-training project, what is the importance of strategic thinking uh, in the learning processes? We already heard the experience from Antoinette, from Judith. Uh, in your view, what would be the importance of strategic thinking in the learning process? Yes. Uh, well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, the, the two weight masters already talked about this, so I would like to add just what what I think specifically for um, for classrooms. I'm the school counselor in my school, so I don't teach traditional subjects. So what I did is to introduce a new subject, a chess subject, to take advantage of uh, this strategic thinking, especially the. Um, the analysis, because in chess you have to take uh, into account a lot of different aspects of a position and combine them. Well, uh, Grandmaster Polgar already <laughs> talked about this, but uh, this is very important for me because today kids have a lot of problems with attention and with working memory. So if uh, you practice analyzing these different parts of the board, at the same time, you develop both things, because if you don't pay attention, that's impossible to do. And you have to memorize visually, which is great, because when you develop the visual part of working memory, you, you improve the, the kind of data that you can store. Um, it's demonstrated that if you uh, memorize only text, 
uh, you have a very limited account. But if you use if you use visuals, it's much much bigger. Um, and also, I think it's very important for them to be able, once you analyze everything, to be able to evaluate, to to talk about probabilities of uh, if it's better for for white this position or black, and you can make decisions after this process of analyzing the different aspects of um, of the thing. And finally, I would like to add that this is especially important for diversity. We have lots of different learning difficulties. Um, they already talked about this, but mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about attention. And one last thing is that for, for students with ASD or ADHD, chess can be a source of giving them something to do that they can do well. Because if uh, you only ask them traditional school activities, they usually do a, a lot of things that are not right. But in chess, they have another opportunity. And, and that, that's what how I see strategic thinking in education as a big value. Wonderful. Thank you so much, David, for sharing your, your thoughts. Antoinette, would you like to add or comment to David's reply? Yes, I believe that uh, what uh, David said is uh, absolutely correct. And uh, the strategic uh, thinking, as I said also before, is uh, a crucial uh, way of thinking, not only in education, but uh, in life, basically. And analyzing, evaluating, planning, but also mm -hmm. being flexible with your plan, because in chess there is constant re-evaluation re after every move the position changes and that's that's why it is so much like in life because circumstances are changing all the time so keeping this uh, flexibility and keep re-evaluating and then you can always change your plan adjust your plan and uh, just uh, do it in the best uh, possible way yeah so i believe it's essential <laughs> Excellent, and that actually ties ties up nicely with the next question that I have for Dimitris. And um, the question that I have for Dimitris is, how can initiatives like CHESS could help develop student agency, meaning the capacity to set a goal, to reflect and act responsibly to effect change? Uh, based on your experience also of the training project, how do you see this happening with, through CHESS? Uh, thank you, Ruth. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for the invitation, the distinguished panels, all guests, and of course, teachers from all Europe. So, as for students' agency, one of the best learning practices is gamification, as we already uh, have told. Games are the best way for students to learn. So, chess is also a game. Through chess, students learn to assess the situation, plan, set goals, and develop a method to approach the desired future. They also learn to anticipate the reaction of the environment, which is in our case the opponent. Children learn to check what works and what does not work, to accept their weaknesses, to modify targets, to evolve and become their best, their, their best version. So as a result, students get used to such a way of thinking and acting. Their brain becomes familiar with this pattern and it is much easier for them to implement such thinking in real life. I think it is much easier for students who play chess to answer questions like what do I have to do, how and why, what went wrong, how I'm going to improve it, and what should be changed. Finally, I think it is very important to mention that chess also influences students' emotional intelligence st since students understand that any behavioral action creates a behavioral reaction. So they learn to affect change, to modify personal behaviors towards desired responses from others. So I have to admit that school life becomes much more attractive, promising and playful for children with having chess in their daily life. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for this attention and uh, it's very interesting indeed to include chess into educational process. Well, thank you for sharing your experience as well, Dimitris. And I would like actually to invite Judith to comment also on your reply. You're muted, Judith. <laughs> yes, yes, it's nice to hear so many inputs from uh, from everyone. And uh, yeah, I believe that uh, through chess, kids uh, do learn kind of a way of thinking systematically in, in many ways. 
And also it is something that they can improve. They can see the immediate reaction, what happens on the chessboard, for example. So they can take the consequences of that. And uh, as it was mentioned with uh, Dimitri, exactly, they can put up the right questions. And chess game is just a tool for them to get the maximum potentials uh, in, for themselves. And I think it's also very important for kids to understand that through chess, it's a game, it's a fighting game. It can be very seriously uh, take, but there's, it's so rich that they can learn such a depth in uh, different situations that they can apply in different subjects. And chess can also stimulate kids to think, because I think to think nowadays, it is somehow not necessarily the most fashionable thing and not necessarily everybody wants to inspire and motivate kids to think. And it is very important not to lose this uh, ability for them and continuously make them curious. And I think if somebody starts playing chess game and small games within chess, they can continuously get into the flow, which is so important. And then they're just going to be learning and improving their personality from day to day. Yeah. That's very, very important. Thank you so much, Judith, for adding those thoughts. And actually, last but not least, Anna, uh, also thank you for joining us. Anna, what do you think it is the impact of allowing students uh, a space and an opportunity to create their own learning process, so their own learning path? Sorry. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, students start their uh, adventure with chess with simple rules, uh, learning simple rules. After that, they can improve their own skills, but it mm, demands their involvement, their own work. If they don't uh, involve themselves in the process of self-education, then won't develop their skills. It shows them how their own development depends on their uh, decision and uh, action, of course. Mm -hmm. It is... Uh, uh, very difficult, but they have because they have to lose uh, many times. Uh, it isn't nice for them. Uh, sometimes uh, they won't do it. Uh, um, but uh, as times goes by, students accept failures and they see them as a part of the way they are going. Uh, it's very important lesson. And after the chess uh, game has started, the young uh, men and uh, boys and girls um, uh, are left alone they have to uh, uh, they have to uh, mm, make their own decision uh, because uh, they mm, has no one to ask for advice um, they um, have to make a decision and take their responsibilities uh, for mm -hmm. for this decision it is uh, it isn't uh, easier uh, chess um, game creates problematic situation and they uh, give their opportunities to learn um, students uh, uh, have to uh, oh i'm sorry <laughs> uh, okay uh, they want to be successful and uh, they know that the failures uh, isn't a problem during the uh, during the playing the chess. Uh, it's a step to success. So uh, they uh, learn um, other things. For example, they don't uh, have to postpone a task uh, because uh, it isn't a good idea. The, if they hesitate, they can lose. The, they don't get what they want. Uh, they um, have to avoid the distractions uh, and concentrate. Uh, it helps with the learning uh, in their <laughs> in is in each uh, subject when they learn at school, uh, especially now when they have many distractors, as for example, internet, etc. Uh, they um, they have to give priority uh, particular tasks, uh, so it, it's it's very very uh, important because uh, they have to. Uh, develop their uh, their skills what what is the main uh, problem of uh, of the learning mm -hmm. uh, so i think <laughs> All. Thank you so Thank much, you. Anna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. There's a question in the audience uh, about the name of your project. So, Anna, uh, the project is Chess, the Game of the Kings. 
and uh, the project from Dimitris and David is learning chess together. Well, this has been a wonderful discussion and I believe, firmly believe that we would actually stay here the whole afternoon talking uh, with very, very interesting topics. Um, but we actually need to move on to uh, our closing. And um, before doing that, I would like to ask uh, Judith and Antoinette if they would like to actually give us some final words. One minute, 30 seconds each. Maybe Judith first and then Antoinette. Yes, uh, thank you. I think it was very important by Anna mentioning failure that this is the road to success. And just a little thought that time management is also something that kids can learn a lot through chess. I just want to say thank you very much for having me here and to be able to share my experience, my views, and uh, hope uh, everybody gets a little bit uh, inspired and go on the path to use chess even more or someone who also only going to be starting to have chess in the classroom. but. Uh, I think uh, I can bravely say so that the person who is a real teacher cares about kids, how they improve, they will not regret using chess. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Antoinette? Yes, I would also like to say thank you for being part of this uh, webinar. And I would like to address the teachers. Uh, really, uh, I hope that uh, you will include chess uh, because chess does develop uh, the potential and I'm sure this is what you want for your students to be able to reach their full potential and chess is the best way for it. So good luck with the chess adventure and hopefully see you again. Thank you so much Antoinette. Well, and now uh, I give the floor to Temis Christofidou, Director General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture from the European Commission. Temis, Thank you for joining us for doing this closing. I thank you and I want to first say thank you to Judith and Antoinette for having been here with us. It's not for you to thank us, it's for us to thank you for sharing with us your amazing life stories. It's so fascinating to listen to you. I also want to thank the teachers that uh, were with us and I want to thank the teachers also for everything they do and for who they are. If I ever have grandchildren, I have one adult daughter, so if I ever have grandchildren, I will do my best to get them to love chess. That's, that's what I come out of from this meeting today. Dear friends, thank you for participating in this webinar. Your contributions through eTwinning and indeed all your efforts to bring chess to the classroom really show how vibrant eTwinning community is. Your efforts continue to break new ground, developing and implementing innovative ways of teaching and learning. As Commissioner Maria Gabriel said, chess helps us develop the right attitude for life. This is an evergreen game, played for centuries, but still capable of capturing our imaginations. The fact that any of us can have agency, changing the outcome of the game by thinking strategically and being persistent encourages precisely the kind of attitude we need. This is how we tackle our current, current challenges. And to do this while developing anticipatory thinking, while using technology, and while being exposed to different ways of thinking across borders, this is really great. Indeed, in an increasingly interconnected world, there is more and more a moral imp imperative to make use of these tools, to listen to each other, and learn from each other. We do it at policy level two here in the European Commission, connecting the member states in peer learning activities. The work of the eTwinning community is fundamental also in this respect. We are proud of supporting you and helping you build so many bridges across the European Union. There are more than one million users and this number keeps growing. This critical mass is essential and I think today is a fantastic example of why. I cannot think of a more emblematic example of bringing our passion to the classroom than bringing chess to help our children learn. This could have never happened mandated top down. It has to spring from the passions of those teaching and learning. And the benefits are evident as we saw today. 
First, chess can help us learn faster, developing the skills we need to succeed in daily life, and sometimes even more immediately in subjects like maths and science. Second, chess is an exceptional motivating tool, helping kids to stay curious, focused, and interested in learning. You spoke of failure, you, you spoke of time management. Uh, there are a lot of things that I've, I kept noting and which I will, I will keep uh, uh, as precious uh, takeaways from this today. And thirdly, the eTwinning platform provides an excellent opportunity for students and teachers from different countries to communicate and collaborate, learning together, also through games like chess. Like maths, chess is a universal language. People from all walks of life and from different cultures could use the chess language to speak to each other, to understand each other, to learn from each other. Chess most certainly brings them all together. Most importantly, chess is not just strategic thinking or maths. We saw how its complexity leads us to other disciplines, to the arts, social science, human psychology, and even languages. So this cross-disciplinary aspect is so important. Difficult abstract ideas come to life precisely when we connect them to everyday experience. So dear friends, for this contribution, I would like to wholeheartedly thank the two chess grandmasters that were with us today, Judith Polga and Antoinette Stefanova, as well as the teachers and all the Etwini community. You're a true inspiration for us all and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you also, Themis Christofitu, for joining us today. And I'm afraid we've reached the end of our webinar. Thank you for your participation. Please don't forget to complete the feedback survey we have shared in the chat. And also, please notice that no certificate will be issued after the webinar. Nonetheless, we will indeed share with you the recording of this session. So if you want to revisit some of the thoughts and also we will share all materials uh, shared during the session today in uh, the page of the webinar, uh, as well some more information about um, Judith Polgar Foundation and the resources that they have available. So once more, thank you so much for joining us, uh, for all our honorable guests for joining us today, including the twinning teachers. Th thank you so much for joining us and I wish you all a lovely evening. <laughs>